The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. After working for his father, who was one of the largest drug dealers in Puerto Rico, Jamie Torres was nabbed by the FBI and sentenced to 25 years in federal prison. When I got shot six times in my chest and got my throat cut, God refused to let the devil wish me away to hell. Amen. He refused. And the reason why was because I'm a ministry man. I'm a man of purpose. Next on Life Today. Today, I'm Randy Robinson, Sheila Walsh with hey. me, as always. Good to have you. Thank you. Our guest today, it's, it's one of those stories that just... <laughs> Amazing. The name of his book is, is called You Can't Kill the Miracle, and you'll understand. You'll get that in here in a minute. But the subtitle says, I didn't know him, capital H, but he knew me. And Sheila, that's the amazing story we're about to hear. Would you welcome to life today, Jamie Torres. How you doing, brother? Good, thank you, sir. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. I like your jacket. Snazzy. <laughs> thank you so much. You've I never mean. said that to me. No, I never have. In all have. the shows we've no. done together, she never said that no, to me. No, I haven't. That's okay, that's okay. So, <laughs> I didn't know him, but he knew me. You gotta tell people, you gotta tell people how bad you were, excuse me for saying it that way, but, you got to tell people the depths of where God has brought you because when I look at you, man, I see the sweetest, nicest guy with the love of Jesus shining on him. And I'd have never believed that you, you, you should still be in prison in a lot of ways, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So tell us, tell us a little bit about your story. Well, uh, many, many years in my life, I lived angry. Uh, not only angry, but uh, I felt like crap. <laughs> to be honest with you, yeah. I uh, didn't find no purpose in my life. I I felt like I was dealt some cards, and and uh, you know, uh, and it was unfair, and uh, and so. Oh, I, what were those cards? You you were born in. I was born in Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico. Uh, yes, sir. Your mother was white, is that right? Your yes. dad was Puerto Rican? She's uh, Puerto Rican, but light-skinned. Light-skinned, okay. Your complexion. Okay. And my dad was dark-skinned, black Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the, she got pregnant, he, he deceived my mom. He was already married and had a family. Oh, wow. And so it was a little town, so my mother was humiliated. Mm. And uh, she, in her pain, she ran. Mm -hmm. And uh, she took me with her. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about a, a little country town in Puerto Rico, and before you know it, we're in New York City in the in the South Bronx. Wow! And so it's a, and you a, had other siblings by the end, or did that come no, later? No, that, that came, came later. later. There's just me and her, but it was a culture shock because she don't know English. Oh, yeah. She don't know the culture. All she right. she's just running. Yeah. And. Uh, and so we ended up in New York, and later on she met my stepdad. And so we was, we was raised in the South Bronx in poverty and dysfunction, and mm -hmm. I never fit in. Uh, yeah. I never fit in. Later on she uh, gave birth to my four wonderful brothers, and, uh, but they're all light-skinned. They don't, they don't look like me, so. So that you, you always felt? I, I always felt like uh, an outcast, like I really, mm -hmm. and uh, in the beginning, not so, but, when they used to have parties, drinking binges, the kids from the hood would come by. You know, it's amazing when people are drinking, people invite themselves in. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, and, and so the kids, one particular young kid, he would be laughing hard. And he would laugh so hard, I'd be laughing with him, not knowing that he was laughing at me. Mm -hmm. oh. and, uh, and then one day he asked me, he said, how can those be your brothers when they are white and you're black? Mm -hmm. And that awoke something in me. Because I, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you've been in the school, in the classroom, and the teacher drew up a board, uh, a, a problem on the board, and then she'll ask you out of the blue, Jamie, can you answer the? Mm -hmm. And 
You don't, you don't have yeah, no eye over no and all the eyes looking at you. Yeah. You feel stupid. Yeah. 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 What made your mom decide to send you back to Puerto Rico to stay with your dad? I joined a gang, and she was uh, worried that I was going to get killed. So she didn't send me to my dad. She sent me to her mama. Oh. But my dad was living in Puerto Rico. So I got acquainted with him when I was 14 years old. What, how did that impact your life? Well, in the beginning when I met him, I, f I finally felt like I was a part of something. I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, you know? Mm -hmm. I, you know, but uh, that soon came to an end. Uh, um, he was a, a drug dealer. And uh, next thing I know, I was running drugs and, you know, uh, as a young boy, you know, you feel, you know, that's why uh, for many, many years, I don't trust the people I thought when they were nice, they wanted something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, I left, uh, I lived a life of crime in Puerto Rico. I was devastated. I was young, 15 years old. And, uh, and um, I suffered, I got stabbed. Uh, I was able to, I got hooked up with a young girl and we have our first daughter. I was, I was 15 years old. Just a baby. Mm -hmm. Just a baby, and um, and uh, and they were gonna kill me. I was gonna die in them streets in Puerto Rico. So, I, my mom told me to come back home, and so I, I decided to come back home. But the cycle continued yeah. because I, I I hated myself. I, I felt that the reason that this happened to me was because I was the problem. Hmm. How did you end up with six bullet wounds in your chest? Yes, I um, you know when you go about doing evil, then evil gonna come sooner or later. It's like, uh, it's like planting a banana tree. If you plant bananas, don't expect apples. Mm. Uh, so, um, mm -hmm. uh, reap what you sow. Yeah, yeah, you reap what you sow. But anyway, I was doing so much evil, so one day they set up a trap for me and, and I got shot six times in my chest. Uh, who's they? Uh, Rival was, gang? Yeah, no, no, it was, it was, um, Friends and family members that just had it in for me. Wow. Yes. Wow. On so, my, I was by this time I was married, so it was a, her family. Oh. And so the in-laws. Yeah, the in-laws. Okay. okay. Wow. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, we can't go through all the details like you do in the book, but you, you end up back in New York City. Yes. And now you're not just using, you're running drugs. Running drugs, yes. What are you bringing in, and, and how much are you moving, and what kind of impact is that having? Well, I was uh, I was going all the way to the Bahamas. I would go to the Bahamas and and super supervise the loads that would come in. Uh, I was no, I was not the big shot, but I was doing pretty big good. Big enough, yeah, yeah. Pretty good. The loads coming in from where? Uh, Colombia. From Colombia, yes. And they were dropping the little island named Elutra, mm -hmm. in in the Bahamas, mm -hmm. and so I would go and and wait, and then we'll hide the drugs in the, in the bushes until they come and pick them up in speedboats from, from Miami. Mm. And I was dealing with a bunch of Colombians and Cubans at that time. Wow. And Dangerous so for group. a whole year and a half, they were doing an the FBI uh, was doing an investigation, but I was not aware of. So they were, you're, the FBI was watching you? They, they were and watching. that's how you eventually got busted? I got, exactly. And what happened? Well, they came on, on on December 1990, and uh, they raided the house, and they took me. And then I f it was on a Friday, and I felt like I was going to get out that Monday. Uh, <laughs> but when I went in front of the judge, he denied my bond mm -hmm. because I was a three-time loser. I've been in prison in and out all my life, okay. so they used my background. So what was your sentence at the end of the day? So I went to trial, lost, and they gave, from a life sentence, they gave me 25 years. It's 294 months federal time, which is, you don't get no good time. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. you, do, you do 80, 85% of your time. So you go to prison. I go to prison. What year was this? 1990. 1990, they, okay, so 1990s, you get busted, you go to prison. Because you you running drugs, yes. You've been in and out of trouble. You you felt out of place. You felt like crap, as you said, a lot of your life. Yeah. And you you're in prison now. What happened to you in prison that changed you? Well, there was a young man there. He was an inmate, and I felt like he was every time 
we would lock eyes. Like if I would go to the microwave or to the phone, I would look up and he'll, I'll see him looking at me, mm -hmm. he'll smile. Oh, that's not good in prison. So, I, yes, sir. So I feel <laughs> like I feel he was making one of them crazy moves. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes sir. And I said, not me. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, and uh -huh. so I, I plotted. I wanted to kill him. Mm -hmm. uh, and I saw myself, envisioned myself uh, doing him harm. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, then one day I had a friend of mine saw me real agitated, and I shared what I was going to do. And when I pointed out, he said, not him. And I said, what you mean? And I, and I he said, no, nah, he's cool. And I said, no, he keep showing me his teethis. <laughs> and then uh, and, and I said, he's not. And then he said, no, he's not that kind. I, I, I go to visits. I know his fiance. I said, well, he's too happy. <laughs> and, um, and he indicated that uh, he was a Christian. That's the first time I hear the Christian. I thought it was talking about a gang or something. He said, no, he won't hurt a fly. He's, he's just religious. Mm -hmm. he, and I said, well, why is he so happy? And then I thought that he probably going to go home early. He was going home soon. That's he why he's getting happy. out of prison. Yeah, sure. But he was sentenced to 25 years, and that's what really shook me mm. to the core, mm. because I seen him every day. He was consistent. <laughs> he had a swag about him. He had a peace about him that I longed for. <laughs> really, he he had something that I wanted. And I just didn't know how to go get it. So what what happened? Did you talk to him? Did he talk slowly, to you? Slowly, slowly, I let him come in my circle, and and you know, and I thought it was an angle. I would I would I would mistreat him. I I, I yes, I challenge him. I challenge his manhood. He would you know, but he never. He would walk away, and two or three hours later, he would bring me a soup in prison. Uh, you know, and nobody. I, you know, nobody ever. I mean, you can tell that he didn't want nothing for, from me, he, but he was real in his conviction. Mm. And um, and then one day he invited me to Bible study. I went and uh, I started crying uncontrollably. <laughs> and uh, I felt there was a preacher speaking and everything was saying, I thought that myself was bugged because how in the world he knew what I was going through. Oh, wow. And I yeah. felt an urge to cry but it was a different kind of cry. And I ran out the chapel, the little chapel in prison, mm. and ran into my cell. And then I didn't even know how to pray. And all I said was, God to this God, if you're real, give me what Gene Lawson has. That's the, <laughs> give me what he has. And I went to sleep. And when I woke up, all I wanted to do was find Gene Lawson. And I, f I ran and, and I found him at the child line. And I, and I told him what had happened. And big old tears came down. Now you gotta understand, we're in the middle of a compound in prison, <laughs> and you got one man there crying, and he, I, you know, yeah. And uh, and he asked me, he said, "Do you want this peace forever, Jamie?" Mm. And I said, "Yes." And he he had a little book always, and he opened it up, cracked it up, took it to Romans, <laughs> and uh, and then he shared uh, the wow. gospel, the the plan of salvation, and and I. Surrender to the Lord. What did that do for you? For all the stuff inside, oh, for man, all your past? I just felt a weight off of me. But the greatest thing, I just felt a peace. Mm. And I felt, for the first time, loved. Wow. Mm. Um, you know, and, and, and that's why this, the book, You Can't Kill the Miracles, because a lot of time we buy into a bunch of lies from the enemy that uh, that God has it, has it in for us and that we... We, we're nothing and that we are dealt these cards. Mm -hmm. But in all actuality, the reason we become attacked is because we have a treasure. We are his treasure. Mm -hmm. It's because we are mm -hmm. special. That's right. And so when, uh, when you are special, then you have an enemy that's going to try to break in and uh, destroy your life so mm -hmm. that you won't walk, go in into your destiny. Mm -hmm. Are you able now to go into prisons, Jamie, and talk to other prisoners? Yes, I go to many prisons, and that's that's what I love to do. How did, you get, how did you get out of prison? Because uh, that's uh, you didn't serve 25 years. No, did you? the the Lord uh, blessed me three Jewish lawyers out of Miami, out of hundreds and hundreds of cases. They chose my case to do pro bono free. Wow! And for seven years, they uh, challenged the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals in Atlanta and they wrote motions while I was doing time. Uh, I thank God for my prison experience, 
really, I was in the belly of the beast. <laughs> um, and that was the best place because God was able to deal with my heart and he was able to reveal himself to me personally, mm. you know, intimate. Yeah. And, uh, and... Uh, seven years, Jamie. You know, they're working on your case for seven years. Did you think the minute they started working on it that perhaps you would get out sooner and it took a long time? What did that do to your faith? Well, that's a beautiful question because when I got found guilty, I was a, I was a baby in the Lord and I felt like the Lord let me down because I felt like sure. now that I'm serving you, surely you're going to... But I thank God he didn't because I wasn't ready. Hmm. And so when I was shackled in the bus, I felt this in my spirit says, don't receive that sentence in your spirit, man. Hmm. And so I said back to God, I, I'm talking back. I said, well, the judge just gave me this time. What you want me to do, lie about it? When they, you know, hmm. it was a big drug case. And, and he said, no, you tell them that I have the last word. Wow. And I hold on to that. That's what kept me there many days, many months, many years I spent that I wanted to give up. But that word that he gave me, I have the last word. Mm -hmm. And uh, he called me. I, I used to tell the Lord, when I get out, I'm going to do this. And one day he stopped me. He said, no, you're going to do it here. Wow. You're going to do it here. You're going to start Bible studies here. You're going to pray here. And so I was a missionary in prison. <laughs> and then the Lord used the prison system to move me from different prisons. And mm. I would start Bible study and then leave somebody in charge and move. And... Uh, <laughs> Amen. That's cool. That's, cool. that's yeah, beautiful. That's, that's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yes. What do you see God doing now when you go in and share your story? Because, I mean, if I went into prison and talked, they would think, well, nice for you, little Scottish lady. But you've been there. I mean, you've, you were a hardened criminal. You had a terrible sentence. When they hear you speak about the love of God, mm -hmm. what do you see the Lord do through your life? Well, and that's a powerful question because I, I want to, you know, I, I went from slinging dope to slinging hope. Woo <laughs> and so uh, I, I thank God and that I was able to uh, go through this process. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> God will trust us. He's looking to us. He wants to trust us with the pain. Mm. And the reason why is because he will never let our pain go to waste. Mm. See, all that I went through today are helping and equipping people mm. to get out that hole. They can relate to me. And I, I bring, I, I'm able to change the atmosphere. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I'm able to go in there and say, what's up? Yeah. You know? Yeah. You're going through this thing here, but if you hold on, you see that you're going to come out and you'll be able to impact lives, right? Because you'll point people to the hope of glory, which is Jesus, you know? And so, like me being here today, I mean, I haven't slept none last night because, you know, I've been overwhelmed that when I got shot six times in my chest and got my throat cut, God refused to let the devil wish me away to hell. Amen. He refused. And the reason why was because I'm a ministry man. I'm a man of purpose. Mm -hmm. He knew before the foundations of the world that I was going to be here with Randy and you. <laughs> we were going to be right here. He preserved me, yes. not for me. <laughs> but for folk. Yep, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. When you were a child, you know, you, you looked at yourself as, a, as an outcast. As a teenager, you were looked at as a, someone who should be in juvie, right? As an adult, you were looked at as a drug dealer, an inmate, but God looked at you different. How does God see Jamie Torres? I'm his prized possession, I'm his son. You see, that, that's one of the tricks. He got many tricks, the enemy does. He got a, 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 a toolbox. Mm -hmm. One of them is he tries to steal our identity. Yeah. You know, you see, I went from, to, from my mama's womb, I went immediately to being a bastard. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then from bastard, right, to inmate, mm -hmm. to a number. See how he constant, he don't want me and you to know who we are That's in right. Christ Jesus. That's right. What we possess, amen. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I'm so glad that he revealed himself as my papa, Abba. Don't you it's love beautiful. the testimony of this man? So, you know, God loves us. He, he created you for a reason. He created Jamie for a reason. He's got a reason, a purpose for all of us. 
And that's why I get excited when I see how we, as an organization, as, as viewers, as supporters, can reach out to others and say, you're valuable. Let me show you some that God looks down and sees as, as his own, that we need to reach out and just remind them who they are. Watch this. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. It's a tenet of our faith. But as a believer, I can tell you, I view my hope with a new perspective when I encounter people who have lost what they hold sacred, their children. I want you to understand something about the, the people here. Um, they tend to have quite a few children, up to seven in some of the families uh, in some of these villages we've, we've seen. And they typically will not all grow to, into adulthood. They'll lose them and they're losing them the same way. One of the most profound lessons I've learned from my parents is that we are blessed to be a blessing. At Life Today, we find people around the world in desperate need of a blessing. Many of them lack one of life's most basic needs. To you and me, this is just dirty water. But to countless people around the world, this is the only source of water, the only thing they have to drink. And for far too many, this is death. Life and death, it could not be simpler. Our hope in Christ challenges us to fight for life. And in this case, our path is clear. This water is clean. It's drinkable. It's beautiful. It's nothing like the water we've seen around the world in places where children especially are dying of waterborne diseases. When you give this clean, pure water, you give them a chance at life. Let's give water for life. It really is a matter of life and death, but it really is easy to give life. Sheila, I know you've been around the world like I have, and you've seen these, these places. It's, it's hard to watch the way they, they are living. It just feels like we have to do something. And that's the great news. We can do something. You know, if you know my story, you know that I've struggled with depression. But you know what I've discovered helps me almost more than anything? is getting involved in somebody else's life and helping somebody else. If you take the word depression and you rearrange the letters, do you know what you get? I pressed on. There's some of you right now and you're thinking, well, you know, I'd love to help somebody else, but I'm not in a great way. Can I tell you, there's something beautiful about the way that God has designed you and me, that when we decide to reach out and help somebody else, touch somebody else's life, you suddenly catch your own reflection and discover you're smiling. There's nothing more beautiful than giving back. And the great news is we can make a difference. I've been in the villages where there is no water well, and I've watched the mothers <laughs> grieve at the graves of their babies that they've buried. And I've been to the villages where we've been able to put in a water that lasts usually for 70 years. They don't even need electricity. There's a pump. It'll go for 70 years and serve like a thousand people in the village. Now, if you and I determine we're all going to do our bit, we literally can change the world for some people. And it's very doable, Randy. Absolutely. Uh, the, the breakdown, if you look at the, the 400 wells we want to do this year, we've already done, you know, in the history of, of life outreach, we've drilled over 6,000 wells now. But 400 this year in 15 nations, average cost of a well is $4,800. It lasts a lifetime for most of these people. So if you look at the sort of the mathematical breakdown, you realize that, that $48 will give clean drinking water for a lifetime to 10 people. $72 will serve uh, 15 people. $144 will serve 30 people. That's, that sort of just gives you an idea of how a little bit can go a long, long way. I hope that you'll give, if you can give a well, if you can give two wells, do what you can. The, the, the significant part is not so much the amount, you know, the widow's might means more to Jesus because it's, it's the obedience. It's the standing up and saying, you know what? 
I'm going to be an example of Christ's love to someone around the world. I'm going to obey. I'm going to give out of my whatever I have. I'm going to give out of a, of a heart that just, just says, I want to express the love of Christ to someone. We do it through water. It's a beautiful example of, of Christ who is our water of life. So will you join us in water for life? Go to the phones. Go online. Just be a part of this. You can be a part of something so good. Do it today. Today, a mother living in extreme poverty will do the unthinkable. Give her children dirty, disease-filled water that she knows could kill them. With no other choice, what else can she do? With your help, clean water is on the way. Mission Water for Life provides a way for parents to save the lives of their children, to offer them a bright future free from the fear of death. With your gift today, you can help drill and establish 400 water wells this year. Your gift of $24 will help provide clean water for five children. A gift of $48 will help provide for 10. $72 will provide for 15. And $144 will help provide life-giving water for 30 people for a lifetime. With your gift, we'll send you the New Mercies Each Day Desk Calendar. This 17-month calendar will not only help you keep track of important dates, but also remind you of the Father's love and goodness with scripture quotes and encouragement from all the hosts on Life Today. With your gift of $100 or more, request the Fruit of the Spirit Bowl. This beautiful and decorative ceramic bowl features scripture revealing the fruit of the Spirit, a lovely addition to your table or home. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,200 to help provide water for 250 people or a gift of $4,800 to help sponsor a complete well. And you may request our Safe in the Shepherd's Arms bronze sculpture. Please call, write, or make your gift online. Thank you so much. Let's make a difference in Jesus' name. That's right. And let me tell you, if, if you're interested in our guest and his book or in having Jamie Torres come to your church, to a, to a prison, to whatever ministry you've got, check out his website. It's jamietorresministries.com, and you can be blessed just like we've been blessed. Have you enjoyed, Jamie? Awesome. Bless you, man. Thank you so much for being here. It's wonderful, it's wonderful to see what God's doing in your life. Thank you. Join us again for life today. Regardless of your net worth, estate planning benefits you and your family. Do not put off this important step to peace of mind. Contact Life Planning Services today. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.